Hello again. The other day I used MolCalc to um, examine the vibrational motion of uh, carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide and water. And uh, today I'm going to use Spartan, the student version, to look at the vibrations, uh, calculated vibrations of uh, methane. So uh, let me begin by creating methane. Make it a little bigger. So there's carbon with the four bonds, and then we put the hydrogens on. Minimize the energy. And uh, I'm going to do a uh, calculation using uh, what's called density functional theory. It's a little higher level than uh, a molecular mechanics, which doesn't give good intensities because it makes both bonds, both uh, carbon and hydrogen, zero charge, have zero charge. It doesn't really distinguish between the electronegativity of carbon and, and hydrogen. So it doesn't give realistic uh, spe spectral intensities. All right, let's submit the calculation. Takes a few minutes. Okay. <clears throat> um, I want to display the properties first. I just want to show you that if I click on one of the hydrogen, it has an electrostatic charge, according to this calculation, of 0.2. So it is uh, slightly electropositive, and carbon has minus 0.8. Of course, this charges have to add up to zero because it's a neutral molecule. And the molecule has a dipole moment of zero, as you would expect, um, because of its center of symmetry. Well, I don't know whether you would call it a center of symmetry, but it's symmetric. <laughs> OK. Um, all right, let's display the spectra. All right, now you can see the frequencies and wave numbers here and the intensities. <clears throat> now, methane has five atoms, CH4, five times three, there's three degrees of freedom for each atom, it's 15 degrees of freedom, but uh, three of them are rotation, three of them are vibration, so it's five times three, 15 minus, nine, uh, minus uh, six, which is nine, and you can see we have three, six, nine vibrations. <clears throat> So let's start with the highest frequency one first. And you can see there's three at the same um, frequency. They're called, this is the symmetry type. Let's not get into that. But there are 3,166 waves per centimeter, or wave numbers. So these are carbon hydrogen stretching modes. And they, because the carbon and hydrogen have charges, uh, they produce an oscillating dipole, and therefore they will uh, interact with the electromagnetic radiation uh, of that particular uh, wavelength uh, and absorb it. So there's three of the same frequency, but they're, they correspond to three different types of motion that correspond to the same energy. <clears throat> now this, this one here at 3053, you'll notice has zero intensity. And the reason for that is because it's a symmetric vibration and, and uh, the charges are all, the positive charges are all going out in the same manner. And so there's still no dipole as it, as it vibrates. So it doesn't produce an oscillating dipole and doesn't absorb in the infrared. Likewise, this E vibration, 1598, has zero intensity. As you'll see, it, it, there's a symmetry about the vibration. The, causes it to not produce an oscillating dipole. So these two are degenerate. And, okay. And then uh, at 1376, we have one that uh, is not symmetric and does produce an oscillating dipole, and there's three of those of that type. So there's two types of vibration, two frequencies of vibration that uh, absorb infrared light. Let's draw the calculated spectrum. And you can see this is the low frequency one here and the higher frequency one here. Now, in real 
life, of course, the frequencies would be somewhat different because this is a calculation. And in addition, there will be rotational structure. The molecule is not only changing its vibrational quantum number, but also its rotational quantum number. So it would be a much more complicated spectrum than this. But um, the Earth's um, Earth acts like a, a sort of like a black body and it emits infrared uh, radiation <clears throat> and it it absorbs it emits infrared radiation in this range and so some of that uh, radiation would be absorbed by methane and that's why it's a greenhouse gas in fact it, it, it really is a stronger per molecule a stronger absorber of infrared radiation than than uh, carbon dioxide but of course there's more carbon dioxide in the air than methane um, methane uh, gets into the air. Well, uh, when cows uh, fart, <laughs> they produce methane. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, some of this fracking, sometimes some of the methane is lost that way, and that produces some methane. It doesn't have a real long lifetime. I forget how many years it is, but not near as long as carbon dioxide or nitrous oxide uh, in the atmosphere. But it's a significant contributor to the greenhouse effect. So there you have it, uh, methane, a greenhouse gas, and all of these gases that are greenhouse gases, um, um, the mechanism of their uh, absorption is a change in the vibrational quantum number due to um, the molecule in undergoing these kinds of vibrations producing an oscillating dipole, and that interacts with the uh, oscillating electromagnetic wave of the infrared radiation. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.